you so much. Okay, guys, you're, you're already better than the 8 o'clock show. Okay, thank you. Uh, keep it going for uh, Leonard and uh, Courtney in there. You saw yeah. it. It's good to be here, guys. My name is uh, John. I'm originally from Glasgow in Scotland. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. I, uh, Glasgow, if you've never been before, it's a very violent place. There's a lot of poverty, a lot of crime, a lot of violence, right? And when I first moved to Canada, I was surprised to learn that people here use baseball bats to play baseball. <laughs> Weird. What? Right? A lot of baseball bats in Glasgow. Never seen a fucking baseball in my entire life. Not once. Scottish people are always portrayed as violent psychopaths, even in movies. In the new Star Wars, there's a Scottish bad guy. And that's embarrassing for me, right? Because even in a galaxy far, far away, there's always some cunt from Glasgow looking for a fight. <laughs> I, uh, I have an accent, it's hard having an accent and doing comedy in a foreign country, right? A guy came up to me after a show recently and he goes, loved the show, loved it. Didn't understand the fucking word. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded real nice though, right? <laughs> it's, it's funny, like, see, because I'm Scottish and I have an accent, like, pe when people can't place my accent, Canadian people love to do this game where they like to try and guess my accent to my face. Strangers. <laughs> like, they think that's okay. I was getting coffee the other day, right? And uh, there was three people in the coffee shop and I, I gave my order and the first woman was like, oh, you have an accent? Are you from Australia? <laughs> I was like, Australia? That's not even the right continent. And did I say something racist? No, I, okay, right? <laughs> I don't think so, right? The second person was like, no, I got it. I know where you're from. You're from Norway. <laughs> Norway. <laughs> Who in the history of the entire world outside of the country of Norway has ever heard a Norwegian accent in their fucking life? <laughs> Not one person, but that guy heard my accent and confidently was like, this guy's definitely from Oslo for sure. <laughs> the third person was like, no, I got it. I know where you're from. You're from Newfoundland. <laughs> Newfoundland. Guys, I would give you Australia and Norway because at least those are real places, man. You know, come on. It's not a real place. When people find out I'm Scottish, Canadian, people get very excited because they've seen it, they've met a live one. They've been waiting their whole life to talk to a real Scottish person, right? But here's the thing, and they all, Canadian people always want to talk to me about Scotland. Right? I've lived here 10 years. I don't want to talk about Scotland to anyone, right? <laughs> Canadians are always like, well, what do you think about Brexit? And I was like, I have already Brexited. I don't... <laughs> I did it before, it was cool. <laughs> and they're like, what about your friends and family back home, John? I'm like, fuck them. <laughs> they could have done this. <laughs> and here's the thing, right? People always want to talk to me about Scotland, but here's the thing. Scottish people don't want to be reminded of Scotland. Scotland's a fucking shithole, right? We left for a reason, right? Right? And people are always trying to introduce me to their Scottish friend and like we're just like, no, no, like no Scottish person wants to meet another Scottish person. We don't want to know about we don't want to be reminded of back home at all, right? And here's the thing, I hate Scotland. I hate Scotland, I hate Scottish people, I hate the Scottish accent. Every time I talk, I throw up a little bit in my mouth. I hate it. And here's some news for you guys who are of proud Scottish heritage, right? Your granddad, your great-granddad, they also hated Scotland, right? <laughs> and they hated Scotland more than I do because your great-granddad came to Canada on a whim before the internet existed. No photos, no Google reviews, no TripAdvisor. <laughs> On a boat, we could potentially die. <laughs> and they got offered that and they were like, I'm doing that because I can't stand another fucking night in Aberdeen. Fuck that, right? <laughs> Canadian people are always like, oh my God, you're from Scotland? I'm from Scotland. <laughs> And I'm like, really? What part of Scotland are you from? And they were like, 
Oh, I, I'm Canadian born and bred, but my great, 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 great grandfather came here from Edinburgh in 1874, so that makes me Scottish just like you. I'm like, does it? <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> Look at me, right? I'm six foot three. I have blonde hair and blue eyes. It's very likely that I am descendant of Vikings. But that doesn't mean every time I meet a Norwegian person, I run up to them and tell them about how I love to rape and pillage, does it? You know what I mean? <laughs> American people are worse, can you believe it, right? <laughs> American, yeah. people, American people are so much more ignorant than Canadians and Canadians are quite up there, right? American guy, <laughs> no offense, but look, offense man, right? But like, <laughs> can he, like, this American guy came up to me after a show recently and he goes, uh, Scottish, huh? You ever seen the film Braveheart? Ha 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 And like, side, side note, side note, Every Scottish person has seen the film Breakout. <laughs> Three times, four times. We fucking love that film. We do. We love that. It's the most historically inaccurate, most culturally inappropriate film of all time. But we beat the English in it and we're like, yeah, freedom, yeah. So, so this guy comes up to me and he goes, ah. I sure never been to Scotland before, but I imagine it's a lot like Braveheart. You're all running around like little savages. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and I was like, funny you should say that actually, because I've uh, never actually been to America before, uh, but I bet uh, you're all running around like in that film, 12 Years a Slave. <laughs> 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 Fucking racist bastards, you know? <laughs> and that really threw him off, right? He was like, oh, okay, what clan are you then? What clan? And I'm like, clan? I don't know, Wu Tang? You know I mean? <laughs> Let me guess yours, Ku Klux, right? Okay, fuck off. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> a lot of people uh, mistake me for being Irish, that happens a lot here, which is fine, right? But people in Canada are very proud of their Irish heritage. But the way people celebrate Irish culture in this country is very weird. Very weird. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. There's a drink that you can buy in any bar in Canada. These guys know, right? <laughs> it's called an Irish car bomb. Right? It's a sh Yeah. Yeah. That's a shot, right? It's a shot of Baileys, a shot of Jameson, poured into Guinness. Apparently, you knock it back and then, apparently, you know, it's called a car bomb because you drink it back and kaboom! Right? I guess that's the whole point, right? But if you were from Ireland, and you're actually Irish, you'd be a little bit upset about it because car bombs were used to commit acts of terrorism. A lot of Irish people died. Very upsetting, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, over here in Canada, no one gives a flying fuck, right? Every St. Patrick's Day, you're dressed like the fucking uh, leprechaun from the Lucky Charms box, right? <laughs> Lying in a puddle of your own piss, knocking back car bomb after car bomb after car bomb. Tell anyone who will listen about how Irish you are, right? <laughs> It's offensive, right? Because if you were truly Irish, you would hate that drink. Be, or like, try going to Dublin and ordering an Irish car bomb. See how fucking far you get, right? Because that would be like me walking into any bar in America and ordering a drink called the New York Plane Explosion. <laughs> what would that drink be? Uh, two shots. Or two towers, should I say, to, right? You drink the first shot, you go, that was horrible. <laughs> I hope I never experience something so awful ever again in my life. 26 minutes later. Bartender hands you the second tower. <laughs> But you weren't expecting the first one done more than enough damage. <laughs> but you drink it down and you're like, oh, it tastes like Jeff Fuller. <laughs> Last thing you remember is someone going, run, he's gonna collapse. <laughs> what are they gonna do, you know? <laughs> Fucking crazy, right? What are they gonna do next? Just make shots named after every horrific world event? <laughs> what are they gonna have next, a Holocaust shot? <laughs> I know, right? What would that shot be? You drink the shot. You wake up, passed out in the shower. Right. 
<laughs> you go to the bar the next day, bartender denies it even happened. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I thought you guys were like, we were with you up until then, John. But like, <laughs> but here's the thing, guys. Those drinks don't exist. I made it up. Relax. But you know what drink does exist? It's an Irish car bomb, so shame on all of you. Fuck off, right? <laughs> I hope I've ruined all your St. Patrick's days. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, breathe everyone. Okay, there we go. I, uh, I'm single, guys. I, uh, I find it hard to date in Toronto. People assume because I'm a foreigner, I'm having like wild, exotic foreigner sex, you know, like I'm shagging for Scotland or something, right? <laughs> But it's just not true, right? My friend said this to me recently. He goes, bro, with the accent, you must be crushing mad puss. <laughs> and I was like, excuse me? And he said it again, he got really animated. He was like, bro, with the accent, you must be crushing mad puss. And I was like, keep your voice down. You're gonna get us kicked out this Tim Hortons for fuck's sake. <laughs> I don't even know what it means. Sounds uncomfortable. <laughs> And then he told me what it meant, and I was like, oh, I'm not crushing any puss. <laughs> Mad or otherwise. <laughs> it's been so long since I've had sex, the only thing that's getting crushed is my spirit. <laughs> here's, a th here's, a, here's a thing that Canadian men do in dating in this country, right, that I found out. Canadian men will put on a fake accent to try and pick up women. That's a real thing. The reason why I know that is because many women over the 10 years I've lived here have accused me of putting on this accent to try and impress them. I'm like, I'm not going to that much commitment for anyone, right? You know what I mean? No one, right? But apparently it's a thing. So I always ask at show if someone's, that's happened to someone, right? And always there's at least one woman who says, yes, I dated a guy with a fake accent and always the accent is an English accent. What is it about that accent? Go cool, blimey, Mary, Mary Poppins, fish and chips, cup of tea. What is it about that that makes Canadian women so fucking wet? Do you know what I mean, lads? Horrible accent, right? And then I know this for another reason too, is because a uh, um, uh, young comedian came up to me after a show recently and he goes, uh, thank you so much, you helped me get laid, John. And I was like, what, me, what? what are you talking about? And he goes, oh, I saw you do comedy and I really liked your accent. So I went to the bar that night. I met a girl and I decided to try to, to like uh, impress her with your accent, right? And I was like, well, how did it go? He said, it went great. We had a good time. We got really drunk, went back to hers. We had sex and he went to high five me. And I was like, no high five for you. No high five for you. No high five for you because you're putting on a fake accent and you're getting laid. I have an accent and not getting laid. There's no high five. Get fucked. And then he said, uh, well, the thing was, I woke up in the morning and I, I was really drunk the night before and I forgot that I put on that accent. And I was like, well, what happened? She's like, well, she was furious and kicked me out. And I was like, of course she was furious. This poor woman thought she'd gone home and made love to an exotic Scotsman. And in actual fact, she just banged Chad from Moncton. <laughs> Canadian women are kind of kinky, they've got a lot of fetishes and stuff. Canadian women always want me to talk dirty to them in the bedroom because they've had like some Outlander, like they've been watching too much Outlander, right? And then you have like some like fantasy of like some buff Scottish guy, long hair on a horse, like take them to a castle and then ravage them, right? And then all they get is me just like, oh, I'll take you to the basement apartment and stuff like that. Your mattress on the floor, right? So I, I'll close my eyes, you know, right? They always, they always want to talk dirty to me, and I just, I'm just not into it, right? Because I got a lot of stuff going on when I'm having sex, right? And I'm trying to like, I'm trying to maintain a rhythm, I'm trying to keep an erection going, right? There's two voices in my head being like, please don't come, please don't come, please don't come, and the other voice is going like, come already, you pussy, come already, you pussy, come already. I get no time for chit chat, you know. <laughs> This one girl I met on Tinder, right? Right off the bat, her opening message was, 
I'm so glad you're Scottish. I have a Scottish guy fetish. I didn't know that was a thing. And by the way, I would never fetish same anyone. But if you're attracted to a guy who eats porridge, looks like porridge, and smells like porridge, right? <laughs> Just a big lump, you know what I mean? You're a freak, right? <laughs> so we started texting, right? We started texting, and uh, we're texting back and forth, and then one, and suddenly she goes, uh, she goes, uh, text me something sexy in your Scottish accent. And I was like, first of all, who texts in an accent? That is bizarre, right? So I just ignored it, right? I thought she was joking, right? Two minutes later, she texted me, all caps, to know that she was being serious, right? She's like, text me something sexy in your Scottish accent, right? And I didn't know what to do, so I was at work and I turned to my friend and I was like, listen, this guy, this girl wants me to text something sexy in a Scottish accent, but I don't know what to do, I don't know what to say. And he was like, well, do you have any, do you think you're ever gonna see this girl? And I was like, probably not, right? So he was like, well, why don't you just, we'll just make up something funny, send it to her, you'll never hear from her ever again, right? And I was like, cool. So we came up with this, right? Now there is some Scottish people in the audience and I would like to apologize in advance uh, <laughs> for the thing I just, I said in this text message. I text this girl, uh, I hope one day that I can get to see your haggis. <laughs> I'm not, not my finest moment, I'll be honest. And honestly, not quite sure what I meant by it. <laughs> And I texted, I threw my phone away and I turned to my friend and I was like, well, never hearing from her ever again, right? <laughs> Two minutes later, I got a text message. It goes, uh, is it weird that I'm turned on by this? <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, yeah, it's fucking weird, you fucking freak. <laughs> and she replied, I hope I get to blow your bagpipe. And I'm like, that's too much. This is getting too weird. This is getting too weird. I don't like it. <laughs> but I wasn't thinking, I wasn't thinking straight, right? My fucking, I, I was like, in my head, I was like, I should not meet this girl, but my penis was like, meet this girl, this is for sure. You're getting laid for sure, right? My penis always wins, so like, we, I met up with this girl. <laughs> I met up with this girl, we had a first date, we had sex, we're having sex, and as we're having sex, she said to me, talk dirty to me in your Scottish accent, right? And as we've discussed, I don't like talking dirty, right? And then, so I ignored it, just hoping that it would go away somehow, right? And then she did it again, but this time it was like the text message, she got really angry, she's like, talk dirty to me in your Scottish accent, right? And I knew she meant business because her vagina tightened, but not like in a hot way, like as if my dick was in a vice, you know, like a UFC fighter getting choked out, you know, trying to tap but not being released. That's what it was like. And I was worried, I didn't know what to do. So I said to her, I said the unsexiest thing you can ever say to a woman while you're having sex. I said, uh, I don't know what to say. And she said, tell me you want to touch my haggis. And I forgot about that text message. I had no idea what she's talking about. Before I had a minute to even reply, she did it again. She goes, tell me you want to touch my haggis? Grab my finger and stuff it up her arsehole, guys, right? Unlooped, no consent, up to the second knuckle. Which is two knuckles too many. And I screamed, I was like, ah! And she thought I was turned on. She was like, oh! <laughs> and then she came, my dick went soft, but my finger was still hard because it was still inside her bum, guys. It was really weird. I've been so traumatized by that moment for the rest of my life, right? And if you don't know why that's traumatic, right? The, the national dish of Scotland is a haggis. And she referred to her arsehole as a haggis. That is cultural appropriation, guys. I have never enjoyed Burns Night ever since. <laughs> oh my god. Sometimes I can feel my finger twitch when I think about it. <laughs> so gross. Uh, moving on. Uh, <laughs> Guys, here's a real thing. I just celebrated five years of being sober, guys. That's the real thing now. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, when I tell a crowd in Canada that I'm five years sober, I get a nice round of applause. People are very positive. They're like, you can do it, John. We're rooting for you. Keep going. If I was to tell a crowd of strangers in Glasgow that I was sober, I'd get fucking booed off the stage. <laughs> They'd be like, boo! You're disgraced to your nation and your family. And I'm like, I'm sorry, mom, okay, I'm trying, right? 
<laughs> it's weird being sober, right? Sometimes my old addict self will pop up at inappropriate times, right? Like, for example, when the vaccines came out, I was very keen to get my vaccines, not because I was pro-vaccine, but just because as a recovering drug addict, I was very excited to have a needle inside me one more time. <laughs> just for nostalgia purposes, you know what I mean? I turned up to get my vaccine, I had my sleeve rolled up, belt around my arm, vein popping, I'm like, stick it in me, nurse, I'm ready to go! And she was like, oh, that won't be necessary, Mr. Mostyn. And I was like, oh shit, we're smoking it? Okay, let's go, okay. <laughs> Give me the booster. <laughs> Anti-vaxxers are always like, are you gonna take the red pill, John? Or are you gonna take the blue pill? What's it gonna be, the red pill or the blue pill? And I'm like, I'm gonna take both pills. I fucking love pills. <laughs> I wanna see everything. <laughs> Being, so, being sober is cool, man. Uh, it's pretty boring, but the, the, most fun, the most fun about being sober is hanging out with other addicts. I recently hosted a comedy show for uh, the Southern Ontario Cocaine Anonymous chapter, right? Fun bunch of people, right? The guy, like, I'll tell you how, how hardcore these guys are. The guy that picked me up to take me to the show had to start his car by blowing into a breathalyzer. He did not have a set of keys. He just blown into his fucking engine, right? Do you know what I mean? And I looked at that guy and I was like, I did not take enough cocaine back in the day. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this guy is for real, right? And these guys are these guys are all ex-crackheads, meth heads and all that, like just insane stories behind them, right? So I was like, I was doing the show, I was doing a little crowd work, I was asking people what their favorite thing about being sober was. And they're always like, uh, you know, no hangovers, no come downs, uh, saving money, having relationships, keeping jobs, all the sort of normal things, right? But then out of the crowd of about 200 people, a guy sat out of his chair and he stood up and he goes, the best thing about being sober is having a girlfriend with teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it was the funniest thing I've ever heard in my fucking life. The whole place is going wild, right? And it's just 200 ex-crackheads, not one tooth between them, do you know what I mean? Just ah! And I, I swear to God, guys, I was on the floor. I was dying. It was the funniest thing I'd ever heard, and I wasn't expecting it, right? So just as the crowd settles down, everyone's laughing, having a good time, and just as the crowd settles down, and I'm about to start the comedy show again, a woman beside them stood up and went, I'm the girlfriend with teeth! <laughs> it smiled the biggest smile you've ever seen in your life. And now the whole place is going even crazier. Everyone's like, Woo! Right, everyone's on chairs, banging walls. It's like an episode of Jerry Springer, right? But instead of them going like, Jerry, Jerry, I swear to God, they all started chanting, Teeth, 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 teeth. And you can take as many drugs as you want, you will never experience that much joy in your fucking life. It was so fun. Been trying to get healthier now that I'm sober, guys. I uh, I used to eat a lot of fast food back in the day, back when I was drinking. I, and it was bad because I used to live next door to KFC. And KFC used to have this meal called a uh, bucket for one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just uh, say that one more time. <laughs> KFC has a meal called a bucket for one. That is the saddest meal of all time. <laughs> Just when you think you've hit rock bottom, KFC's like, no, John, there's more. <laughs> Grab a shovel, we're going deep tonight, son, you know? Because I've been down, I've been depressed, I've been low in my life, but I have never been bucket for one sad. <laughs> that was a new experience for me. Do you know what I mean? If you're eating food out of a bucket, you are saying to the universe that you've given up on yourself, you've given up on life, and you've given up on knives, forks, plates, spoons, and bowls. Like that is, you've just given up completely if you're, that, if you're at that point in your life, right? And I feel like a bucket for one should be renamed the fuck it bucket. <laughs> because that is exactly the last thought in your mind before you order it, right? Just like, fuck it, right? Just... 
And uh, that's a meal. Okay, with delivery apps these days, you can get that meal delivered to your house. You don't even need to get your pajamas out your bed to get a bucket of dead meat to deliver to your door. <laughs> that is disgusting. That shouldn't be allowed. I think that should be a meal that you have to go to the restaurant, get your bucket, leave the restaurant, and as you're walking down the street, the nun from Game of Thrones walks in front behind you, just like shame, 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 shame. <laughs> I just, uh, this year I got permanent residency of Canada. <laughs> this guy's not clapping, but that's fine, okay? Uh, it's like, go back to Scotland, mate. Okay, um, I just got permanent residency of Canada, and uh, they don't make it easy for immigrants. They make it quite hard. Uh, check this out, guys. Before I could even apply for permanent residency, I had to sit and pass an English language test. A lot of you looking at me like, fucking right you do, buddy. <laughs> I had to sit and pass an English language test to prove to the Canadian government that I am fluent and capable in speaking the only language I've ever known how to communicate in. Do you know how much pressure there is to pass an English language test when you only speak English and your entire life depends on it? That's a lot of pressure. Because it's hard. And if you don't pass English language test, you can't apply for permanent residency. So I was worried if I failed, I would get sent back home to Scotland. Do you know how embarrassing that would be? <laughs> Just back in Glasgow, all my friends are confused. They're like, what are you doing back here in Scotland, John? I thought you were living in Canada. What happened to that? And I'd just be like, well. <sighs> Turns out, I don't know how to speak English. <laughs> They're like, we fucking know. Um, so I passed and then I applied for permanent residency. And one of the things you have to do when you apply for permanent residency is you have to provide the last 10 years of employment. Um, nosy bunch of cunts of Canadian immigration, right? <laughs> Mind your own fucking business, right? But I was working my way through all my old jobs, right? And I've had so many jobs here. But, and I forgot about this, but when I first moved to Canada, I worked at Tim Hortons for 30 minutes. <laughs> Half an hour, that's how long I lasted at Timmy's, right? Here's what happened, guys. I moved to Canada, didn't know anyone, didn't know what Tim Hortons was, got a job in downtown uh, Toronto, King Street West, in one of those underground food cafe thing, like plaza things, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And the path, you guys know what the path is? Yeah. yeah, everyone in Toronto, we all know what the path is. No one in Toronto knows how to use the path. It's a very <laughs> fucking confusing system. Once you go in, time doesn't exist. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> There's no way you know which, which, east or west, you don't know which way you're going at all, right? And no matter which way you walk, every, every store's like Rexel, Rexel, Shoppers Drug Mart, Second Cup, Rexel. Dry cleaning for some reason, right? My, and when, once you go in, you can't get back out. Right, my theory is that people that work in Quiznos in the path walked in there one day trying to get a shortcut to Young and Dundas Square, got lost, and then they're just like, well, I work here now, you know? <laughs> So I get a job there, Tim Hortons, Monday morning, nine o'clock. They don't give me any training, by the way. They just toss me in. It's just me and a bunch of other immigrants. They don't speak English. I don't speak English. <laughs> Everyone's freaking out. We're like, what's going on, right? And they put me on the front counter and they open up the shutter and there's like a hundred angry, pissed off Canadians that had my coffee yet. Which is a terrifying sight for a new immigrant, right? Just like the walking dead of people being like, double, double. <laughs> and the first woman in line, she comes up to me, she goes, uh, what kind of Timbits do you have? And I was like, what the fuck are Timbits? <laughs> I had no idea, right? She's like, 10 bits. And I'm like, I don't know what you're saying. She's like, 10 bits. And I'm like, I passed my English language test. I don't think that's a word. And she's like, can I speak to your manager? And I'm like, I think I'm the manager. I don't know. I'm not sure at this point. <laughs> uh, thank you, one person. Okay. <laughs> Canadian people, uh, you guys got some weird pastimes, right? You guys do weird shit, right? You guys like, every summertime, you like to go to the cottage. So Canadian people like to go, they like to go to the cottage. I've lived in this country for 10 years, never been invited to the cottage once. I just wanna go. 
<laughs> Where is it? <laughs> Where's this cottage? <laughs> I hate people that have cottages too, right? Because they're always boasting about it on Instagram and it fucking drives me crazy, right? There always just be a picture of like four of them in a kayak or something, right? Just like for some reason, right? And then there's just like some inspirational quote at the bottom of the post, just like, just living my best life at the cottage. <laughs> and I always see that on my phone. I'm like, fuck you. I hope you get eaten by a beaver, you cunt. Right? <laughs> I hate people that have cottages. You'll see this on Facebook. People leading up to a long weekend, people always go like, going cottaging this weekend. That's what Canadian people say. They go, going cottaging, like it's some sort of boast, right? But here's the thing, guys, where I come from in Scotland, the word cottaging does not mean going to a cottage. <laughs> the word cottaging where I come from in Scotland means when one, two, several men, strangers, go to a park late at night, they meet up after dark, they go into a bush, they, you know, <laughs> they hold hands, they kiss, they, you know? That's what cottaging means. You can Google that later on, right? <laughs> Never been invited to that one either. <laughs> so now every time someone's uh, online being like, going cottaging this weekend, I'm always like, hee 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 hee. And I'll always reply like, well, have fun and remember to use protection. <laughs> and they get confused. They're like, protection from what, John? The sun? I'm like, yeah, someone's son for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do like living uh, in uh, Canada. I don't like the winter time, though. No. I don't like the winter time. But the reason why I don't like it is because as a foreigner in this country, I'm not allowed to have an opinion about how cold it is. <laughs> That's for Canadian citizens only. <laughs> I remember in January this year, I remember the day I was minus 16. I turned to my friend and I was like, it's really cold today, eh? Brrr. <laughs> <laughs> and she looked at me in our discussion. She's like, this isn't cold, John. <laughs> Just you wait. <laughs> Gets a lot colder here in Canada in the winter time. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I know. I've lived here 10 years. <laughs> Just making small chat for fuck's sake. <laughs> I have noticed that Canadian people get very competitive about the temperature in other cities in Canada than the one that they currently live in. And they always like to tell me about it. I live in Toronto, I'll make the mistake of mentioning the weather. Someone will get visibly upset. They'll be like, oh, you think Toronto's cold, John? You should try spending a winter in Montreal. That's a proper Canadian winter. It's so cold in Montreal in the winter time, people speak French. <laughs> Someone else would be like, Montreal, pff, I'm from Winnipeg. <laughs> Sometimes in Winnipeg, it gets cold as minus 40, minus 50 with the wind chill. What do you think about that, John, huh? <laughs> like, that sounds fucking shit. <laughs> Can a psychopath live in Winnipeg? <laughs> do you know what I mean? And if someone else is not even in the conversation, but is overheard, everyone will just come storming over, just be like, have you ever spent February in the Yukon, John? <laughs> That's a proper Canadian winter. It's so cold in February in the Yukon, John, that we sleep in the freezer just to keep warm. <laughs> so cold in February in the Yukon, John, snowmen are just called men. <laughs> Relax, chill, guys, okay, chill, chill. <laughs> Oh. I have a, I've traveled all around the world and there's a stereotype of Canadians as being super nice. That's what people around the world say about Canadians. That's not been my experience living here in Toronto. <laughs> Bunch of passive aggressive bastards here in Toronto. Yeah, stop it. This happened to me recently. I was getting on the subway, eight o'clock Sunday morning. I was going to work, right? I walk up to pay my fare. I go up to the little booth thing. I pull out a $5 bill. I put it down and I very politely say to the guy behind the thing, I go, may I have some change, please? And this guy doesn't do anything. He just stares at me. 
And I, I don't know what's going on, so I just stare back at him. <laughs> and now we're just two men staring into each other's eyes for no reason whatsoever, right? And then finally he goes, I'm not a mind reader. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he said that again, he goes, I'm not a mind reader. And I'm like, buddy, I know you're not a mind reader. You work for the TTC for fuck's sake. <laughs> We stare into each eyes a bit longer. Weeks go by, right? <laughs> Till finally he points at the $5 bill and he says, you're gonna have to tell me what you want with that because I'm not a mind reader. And I was like, fuck, I lost my shit, guys. I'm like, buddy, I know you're not a mind reader, but you don't have to be a mind reader to know what I want with that $5 bill. In fact, it's very easy to know what I want with that $5 bill. I come along, I give you the money, you give me the change, I put it in the box, I go downstairs, into the underground choo-choo and off I go. <laughs> Next person comes along, same thing happened. I'm trying to get to my shitty job. You're already at your shitty job. Why are you making this harder than it has to be for the both of us? <laughs> now, I didn't say that to him, but I gave him a look that implied that's exactly what I was saying. <laughs> and this guy wasn't done being a dick yet, right? He leans in. I know, surprised, right? Yeah. He picks up his little microphone, he leans into it a bit closer and he goes, this is my microphone. And he points down to where I'm standing. Just here by my hip, there's a little microphone for me. And he goes, that's your microphone. <laughs> this is how we communicate. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, right? So I lean down and I'm just like, can I just get some change for the subway, please? Right? And he goes, certainly, there you go. And he throws it down like meh, right? And he goes to turn away and I'm like, Hold on a minute. Why is this guy giving me shit at eight o'clock on a Sunday morning? No, 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 no. All right. And here's a little bit of advice. Never be a dick to a Scottish person, right? Because we will be a bigger dick to you. That is our superpower. We, we love it. We will be a bigger cunt than you can ever imagine, right? So don't do it, right? She, the only Scottish person's laughing because she knows as well, right? So I was like, Fuck this guy, eight o'clock on Sunday morning giving me shit, right? Fuck this guy. So I lean down, I tap on the microphone, and he turns around. And now I pretend to be a foreigner who's never used the TTC before. <laughs> <laughs> I look down at the money, I look at him, I look down at the money, I look at him and I go, so what do I do now? <laughs> And he goes, oh. <laughs> put the money in the box. And he goes to turn away, but before he does, I lean down and I go, <laughs> he could have told me I'm not a fucking mind reader. <laughs> guys, thank you so much. I've been John Master. Thanks for coming out, guys. Ha <laughs>